welcome to my channel civil knowledge today let us discuss a new unit that is introduction to engineering mechanics part 1 so it comes under your module 1 only okay so two units are there in your, in your model module 1 okay so unit 1 is the introduction to civil engineering and unit 2 is introduction to engineering mechanics so in the last uh, unit we have seen the different fields of civil engineering okay so what is the role of a civil engineer in infrastructure development how a civil engineer helps in the development of a country so all that preliminary parts of an engineering civil engineering or it was an introduction to the branch we know about it now we will learn about some of the fundamentals of engineering mechanics right so let us start our syllabus without wasting time so first one is introduction to engineering mechanics so before going to the introduction we shall know about what is mechanics right so mechanics is nothing but the it is a physical science which deals with the behavior of the body under the action of forces and when the body is at rest or in motion okay so mechanics is a physical science okay it is also a science which deals with the behavior of what the body and the body should be under the action of forces okay the body should be under the action of forces either the body is at rest or in motion okay the body is under the action of force either it is at rest or in motion the behavior of the body the study of that behavior or the reaction to the force which it is showing to us the study of that is called as what mechanics in simple way mechanics is a science that deals with the forces and the effects of the forces on the body okay it depends upon the forces okay once we deal once we deal with the forces means for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction your newton's third law fx will be seen right so learning the fx with the forces okay is called as a mechanics okay here uh, one minute yes here we apply the laws and principle of mechanics to the engineering problems or actual problems is termed as engineering mechanics it is the basis for understanding the behavior as well as the analysis and design aspects of engineering structures and machines so next slide so in engineering mechanics we can see various uh, branches or it is divided into two types that is mechanic of solids and mechanics of fluids it is also called as fluid mechanics okay it is also called as fluid mechanics which you will learn in your higher semester that is at the third semester so now in this semester we shall focus on the mechanics of solid so this mechanics of solid is further divided into mechanics of rigid bodies and also mechanics of deformable bodies so this is in your higher semester okay mainly in this semester we will focus on this mechanics of solid only mechanics of rigid bodies in that mechanic of rigid bodies we have two types that is what when the body is at rest okay when the body is at rest and when the body is in motion if the body is at rest it is called as what statics when the body is in motion it is called as what dynamics fine <coughs> so mechanics of rigid bodies so in that statics and dynamics so the whole thing which all the necessary parts and necessary formulas comes under this engineering mechanics now we will see to apply this knowledge we need to assume some of the idealization that is basic concept of idealization so when applying the laws and principle of mechanics to practical problems a number of ideal conditions are assumed to exist okay so in the absence of such assumptions idealization it may not be feasible to find solution such idealization will not vary the accuracy of results of analysis obtained below the required optimum level so what here they are saying means so whenever we apply the laws of mechanics okay laws and principle of the mechanics we should assume some of the ideal conditions okay and these ideal conditions will make our problem 
will make our problem or it will help us to solve more easily or solution will be very quick okay without this ideal condition we may have the solution or we may not get the solution also okay but here such idealization will not vary the accuracy of the result this is most important thing that it does not allow or it does not vary the accuracy of the result the accuracy the accuracy of the result will be good so that we can compare to the actual what is the practical problem values so that we can find the solution for the engineering problems so what are that problems we'll see in the next slides okay in your coming classes right now one minute yes so what are the basic idealization of solving mechanics problems first and first one is we will consider a term for particle so what is this particle so a particle is a body of infinitely small volume and the entire mass of the body is assumed to be concentrated at a point right what is a particle a particle is a body of infinitely small volume and entire mass of the body is assumed to be concentrated at a point or a particle may also be defined as an object okay that has no size okay zero size but has a mass okay and is assumed to be a single point in space it is assumed to be a single point in space so what we can give as example so the examples of practical problems involving the distances considerably larger when compared to the size of body so whenever we come we assume the movement of the earth okay whenever we assume the movement okay i am writing from the mouse so it is uh, disturbing okay so see here whenever we assume the earth movement of the earth when compared to the celestial space okay celestial sphere earth is treated as a particle when we consider a whole space so for us earth is a big element but whenever we consider a full sphere celestial sphere the earth is a tiny object or a particle we shall, whenever we solve a problem related to a entire mass of celestial sphere full space is there okay when we consider full space then this earth is assumed as what a particle okay like that whenever its body the size of the the distance is considerably even larger when compared to the size of the body okay uh, in another example we can say as an aeroplane okay on an earth okay aeroplane can be treated as a particle when when we consider uh, the description of its flight path okay so if an aeroplane is its flight path is so big okay whenever we solve a problem of the aeroplane's flight path whenever we consider its path we will treat this aeroplane as a tiny particle okay when we consider this aeroplane as this particle only we can solve this problem involving its flight path okay understanding right so in easy way earth is a tiny particle when we can compare the whole space of the sphere that thing we call is a it as a particle so simply a particle is defined as an object that has no size but has mass and assumed to be a single point in space so next one is the continuum so what is this continuum so a body consists of several particles and each particles at microscopic level can be visualized as molecules atoms and electrons right we all said in your first class 12th or puc right the body consists of several particles and each particle at microscopic level can be visualized as what molecules atoms and electrons now the real picture of molecules and atoms is too complex to deal correct the real pictures of these molecules and atoms are too complex to deal so that the physical quantity obtained by averaging the effects of molecules and atoms at macroscopic level so at microscopic level only they are too complex to deal with so 
whenever we come with these things the physical quantities obtained by averaging the effects of molecules and atoms at microscopic level macroscopic level the body are assumed to be consist of a continuous distribution of matter okay we will consider whenever we consider a physical quantity we will consider it as a continuous distribution of what matter so such hypothetical continuous distribution of matter so it is we are assuming it as a it is a continuous distribution of matter in the body it is treated as a continuum okay so the any physical quantity we are considering so it consists of what molecules atoms and electrons so whenever we consider in an engineering problems so we will not deal with this molecules atom and electrons we will consider it as what continuous distribution of matter so such hypothetical continuous distribution of matter in the body is treated as what continuum so next one is rigid body what is this rigid body a body which does not undergo deformation on the application of force is called as what rigid body so a body which does not go deformation only okay deformation means it is change in shape and size okay so a body which does not undergo deformation on the application of force in, is called as what rigid body so that we can tell as the deformation is zero so the body will retain its shape and size it will not change it will retain its shape and size or the distance between the two points does not change under the action of applied force neglecting small relative deformation here you can see in this picture so this is a rigid body okay so whenever we apply force on this okay this sigma it will not change okay it is constant okay but small negligible small relative deformation can be neglected that is p to p dash can be neglected but according to the definition what is a rigid body a rigid body is one which does not undergo deformation on the application of forces and it will retain its shape and size of the body and the distance between any two points if we take consider this points okay and this distance is what we will consider the distance as what x the distance between these two points will not change under the action of force if we if we apply force also the distance between these two points will not change so such a body is called as what rigid body fine so next one is force so as you all know what is force a force is a push or pull upon the object resulting from the object's interaction with another object whenever there is an interaction between two object there is a force upon each of the object okay so in a simple way what we can say a force is a push or pull okay so this definition is for puc level right but here in this engineering what we can tell so according to the newton's first law force so what is newton's first law if you remember well and good if you not remember i will again tell you in the next coming slides or in the next session okay so according to newton's law force is defined as an action force is defined as an action or agent which changes or tends to change the state of rest or of uniform motion of a body in a straight line so according to what is a force a force is defined as an action or an agent it is an agent which changes or tends to change so one item is there so force is such an agent so this item is there so whatever square box is there no it is there it will be stagnant okay it is just it is in the space assume that okay so what is the force of according to the newton's first law it is an agent which changes or tend, tends to change okay whenever we apply a force or whenever an anything is applied which makes this body to move okay to move means move means what it is changing its state of rest okay or if the body is moving continuously okay if the body is moving uniformly okay when the body is uni moving uniformly see here i'll do when the body is moving uniformly a 
agent whatever the force okay some agent will come so that this uniform state of body okay it will tend to change or it will slow down so that there is a change in the routine of that body then it is called as what force according to the newton's first law so again i am repeating the statement it is a force defined as an agent so newton's first law force is defined as an agent or action which changes or tends to change the state of rest or of uniform motion of a body in a straight line so this is called as force okay next so what is the units of force so in gravitational unit system unit system in a gravitational means in mks unit system force is the kilogram force and this is denoted as kgf so unit of force is kgf so 15 kgf like that we are telling in the mks unit system so what we are following we are following what si unit system right so what we are telling it as newton okay the force unit of force is what newton how it is denoted capital n most important capital n only not this n capital n is defined as what newton how much force 50 newton we should tell like this 50 newton like this okay so here one note is there see 1 kgf is equal to g newton so g is what the gravitational constant that is 9.81 meter per second so 1 kgf is equal to 9.81 newton or sometimes we will directly consider 1 kgf is equal to 10 newton so this is about today's session so what we learnt we learnt about what is mechanics so basic idealization for solving the mechanic problems that is particle continuum rigid body and also force and the unit of force is what newton right? correct so in mks system it is kgf and in si system it is newton 1 kgf is equal to 9.81 newton or 10 newton you can take so here i conclude today's session so in the next topic would be dealt in your next session thank you